Actually, customers, it's not mine. Um, it's a music man, and I believe a uh, what is it? Um, two ten sixty five. Ah, here it is down here. Here we go, two ten sixty five. So, what's happening with this is um, customer brought it in, complaining about it not sounding right. Now, I played it. I checked over things, I checked the bias, I did all that stuff. Everything seemed to be good. The only problem I found was this speaker switch here was set to 8 ohms. And the two speakers in here, which are these um, Lowrance, which are made in Australia, um, they're 8 ohm, but they're wired in parallel, making them 4 ohm. So I flicked this over to 4 ohm, and the amp did sound better. But the customer took it, and he said, nah, it's still sounding like garbage. Now... Uh, they have the power tubes, which is usually two 6CA7s. Uh, now, I was having a discussion with a friend about 6CA7s, and he said, no, they're different to EL34s. But when I look at data sheets for the two, they're exactly the same. And in, in fact, every single manufacturer at the top of their data sheet says 6CA7 slash EL34. So, and at the end of the day, the... the Specs are the same. The data sheets are identical. Um, so I changed, I, I took these out for, for safety, but basically I did change the power tubes and rebiased the amp. It didn't change anything. I changed the phase inverter tube to a brand new 12AX7, didn't change anything. Now I was told that a previous technician looked at this, but it came back to the customer the same. So I'm not sure what's going on. now. The customer did say to me, recap it, do whatever you want. I, I won't take this off again, but I did take it off and have a look. These are, they're brand new Sprags in here, and they're giant, and they're brand new. And all of the caps underneath here, which I'll, I'll flip over the chassis and you'll get to see that later in the video, they're all brand new electro, um, electrolytic caps as well. So the problem lies elsewhere. Now I did notice in the cabinet here, there's a set of, uh, I think they're LM, LM307s. These are those weird transistors that have eight, I think eight legs on them or six legs on them. I haven't counted. Now there's four of them in here and four of them look like they had been replaced inside the amp. So I'm wondering if there's a problem with the preamp stage and, uh, and, and nothing's changed, nothing's fixed. So we're going to do a bit of investigation. Now I'm not the strongest person when it comes to the solid state side of things, but basically I know a few things. Check your plus and minus voltages, which I think on the, I think if I if memory serves me correctly, uh, is um, uh, plus and minus 16 volts on on either side of the those transistors. I think if memory serves me right, we'll have a look. We'll learn together. And, and um, you know, I'll check for signal. I'll signal trace and see where the signal is is dying or distorting, really. And it's, it's a really faint... Like, you play the guitar, and I try to record it and I listen back to it, and it's just not coming out through my microphone. So I apologise. You're not going to get to hear this. But there's the guitar tone, and then there's this little faint undertone, and it's distorted. It's kind of like it's clipping. And it's a really hard clipping, but it's very faint. It's very faint. So it leads me to believe it is in the preamp stage, especially for the fact that I've changed the power tubes and I've changed the phase inverter or phase splitter, whatever you want to call it. And it's, it's still, you know, it's still doing it. I even plugged it into different speakers. I even unplugged the, uh, the speaker here, these two, and I plugged it into a, a four ohm speaker I have here and it still sounded exactly the same. So, without further ado, if you want to go on this journey with me and figure out some stuff, uh, I'm going to be learning just as you are, so we're going to do this together. 
Uh, stick around. If not, you know what? It's YouTube. Close the window and open up a new one. And watch something else. Alrighty folks, so here's the underside of the amplifier. I thought I'd show you the electrolytic caps that have been replaced. So the two here that have been replaced. And as we go up the chassis, we'll find that one's been replaced. That one's been replaced. Keep going. That one's been replaced. Let's keep going. Are there any more? That's it. Those are all the filter caps, every single one. And look, I, like I said, I didn't show you the ones underneath the doghouse. Trust me, they're brand new Sprags. They are brand new. We're gonna have to look elsewhere. Now, what I was saying about uh, those LM307Hs, I think they're called. That one doesn't have a marking on it. That one doesn't have a marking on it. That one does. That one doesn't. That one does. That one doesn't. That one does. Oh, sorry, that one doesn't. Ah, ha, ha, fooled me. So, what's happening is, is that some of these have markings on them, some of them don't. I haven't taken each one out. I don't even know how to test them. I've never come across them before, but like I said, I'm just a, a, a guy who, you know, does this on the side. So, um, I'm going to have to look at data sheets and learn about this. I, I'm going to start with signal tracing. I'm just going to turn the amp on. Uh, I don't have any power tubes in it, but as always with good practice, even if I don't need to, I'm still going to put a dummy load on here. Even though there's no power tubes in here, I'm not going to burn out the output transformer. It's just a thing that I do just to be, uh, just to have a habit of doing it every single time. Uh, I did notice this capacitor here is different to the rest of these little chiclet ones. Here's just a little, uh, you know, round one there. So we'll have a look at that. Um, this giant 1.5 kilo ohm resistor here looks a bit dark on either side. I'm going to measure that and see that. That looks like a newer resistor compared to everything else in here. But then again, it might be, might be okay. Uh, 10 ohm resistor, we'll measure that. We'll measure these resistors, these Allen Bradley ones here. You know, because they're notorious on fender amps, and uh, after all, this is a music man, so the apple didn't fall too far from the tree. Look, that's it for starters, so let's flick the amp on and... and well, actually, before I flick the amp on, let's take some, take some measurements first and make sure that the things that I, I think might be suspect uh, are in with, uh, within specifications, and then if they are, or close enough to it, and I'm happy, then we'll go on to do a bit of a signal trace and see what we can find. So let's crack on, hey? So I was doing a little bit of a visual inspection. I was looking at circuit diagrams. To be honest, I'm, I was having zero luck finding the correct schematic because every single one that I'm finding has these IC8s, LM1458s. And I can't find that anywhere on here at all. And what I'm finding is every single schematic does not have the phase inverter tube, which is what I believe this IC8 is doing, because all the other ICs, IC1 one through 7, are the LM307Hs, which are these weird round things with the 8 pins or 6 pins or whatever. I haven't even looked at them. But I'm having extreme difficulty, basically impossible, finding a schematic that does not have these ICs as the phase splitter, but looks like the amp with the phase inverter tube. Now, I'm looking at the model number on the back of here. It's a 2275-65. And if I look here, 2275-65, and everywhere I've looked, it's that. When I look up other models, and I decided, you know what, because, you know, schematics have been wrong, and sometimes, and Fender's Fender, Leo Fender has been known to do this, He'll have an amp, it'll have a model number on it, whatever it is, and then you'll open it up and go, hang on, this isn't an a this isn't a basement blah blah blah. It's a it's a basement AA something else circuit instead of an AB circuit, and it was kind of a transition period or something like that. Anyway, screw all this. Screw all this. I sat here and just, you know, stroked my beard and looked at the amp and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to visually inspect this, screw the schematic, 
and I'm just gonna, you know, decipher this on my own. So, what I found is, and I'm looking here, see this JE1692 transistor? And there's one here as well, okay? And they are part of the phase splitter circuit, and you can see they, they go to the cathodes of the 6CA7s, EL34s. I found that, that JE1692, and I looked on the board here, and it's these two little ICs here. And I thought, let me take them out and identify them. Okay? So I took that one out. That doesn't say J... What is it? JE1692. I can't even read what it says on there. Now, this one I was about to take out. I'm going to bring you around here. See that leg? Look what it's doing. It's not even in the hole. Okay, so these have been taken out and put back in and not put back in properly. So, you know what? It's time to test. I'm going to I'm going to fix that leg up as gently as I can because I don't want to fatigue it and break it. And I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to fit the amp back into the chassis, plug in the speaker, and I'm betting I'm betting that it's going to take that distorted little sound I mentioned at the beginning of the video and completely eliminate it. I'm crossing my fingers anyway. <laughs> but this is what it is, you know, it's about testing and discovering. And, and, and you know what? Just sit here and look at the amp unplugged. Just look at stuff. It's, it's no big deal. Uh, it's, not, it's not a time waster. If I never looked, I would have never discovered that little leg poking out right there. So, let me uh, fix that up, let me plug the amp back in, and uh, let's test out the amp. Alright folks, so uh, yeah, that transistor did the job. Here's the guitar amp now. seems to be working. There's still a bit of underlying grit there, but I am playing through a, a Gibson with some hot pickups, so there's going to be a little bit. And I, if I roll back the volume though... This thing's sounding great now. It's definitely got some punch. Whereas before when I did that, and I and apologise, I didn't record it. Um, it um, if I did that, if I dug in, you know... Now when I do that, it's probably distorting the microphone, my apologies. It is freaking loud. It's loud in here anyway, and the volume's only on three. The When I did that before and I dug in, it kind of lost its balls, lost its power. And, and it didn't have that punch, you know, the, the speakers were, weren't pushing any air, uh, and now it is. This thing's sounding amazing now. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I've learned something. I hope you have as well. Cheerio.